I'd like to do a quick video here about uh, fuel oxidation or it's often referred to as fuel turned into a varnish. At any rate, it happens from leaving an engine set for a long period of time. Uh, so whether you've got a generator that has set because you just purchased it or if it is set because you left it sitting over the winter or whatever and now it will not start but it did start fine the last time you ran it. Very likely what you've got is fuel oxidation which like I said earlier is commonly referred to as varnishing. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. Basically fuel turns into this thick sludge that coats the insides of the pilot jet, the fuel jet, the emulsifier tube, the fuel pickup tube, and so forth. On the EV6010, a quick shortcut in order to get the thing running if it has not gotten to the point where it's too bad is you'll see there's three hoses that come out underneath the oil filter. One of the hoses goes to this tray and there is, for the lack of a better term, I will say it is a sink and that's connected to the drain. The second hose is connected to the float bowl drain tube so you would loosen the float bowl drain screw and drain fuel out of that if you needed to. The third hose is connected right here and that's the float bowl vent. So let's say that you're trying to start a generator that's been sitting for a long period of time and it either will not crank or you see fuel pouring out of the float bowl vent hose. If your generator is in a position where it is very restricted and it's difficult to get at, you can pull this hose off without loosening up the hose clamps. They're not that tight. But since I can get at it easily, I'm going to go ahead and loosen up this hose clamp just a little. And then slide this hose off. If you had trouble starting it or could not get it to start with the hose still connected, now with the hose removed, try to start it and see if it runs fine. If it runs fine with the hose removed, that means that the float bowl vent is clogged up, either from mud or some kind of a creature building a nest in this hose, or some creature climbed in the hose and died. Take a blow gun and pointing it in this end of the hose, you'll hear it build up pressure and then pop and whatever creature it was will come shooting out this end of the hose. If when you blow air into this end of the hose, if it comes out fine, or if the generator does not run any better with this hose disconnected, then you need to do a little bit more work on the carburetor. With this hose disconnected so you can get at this barb, crank it over, and if you have fuel pouring out of this hose, it means that the float is stuck in the open position. That's not very common that they would stick in the open position and allow it to flow out like that. Usually they will just gum up and it won't flow any fuel into it. However, the easiest thing to do, and I'm not a fan of the supposed aerosol overhaul, but I have discovered some products that do work really well. And let me go over them here. If you have a Yamaha marine dealer near you. Yamaha has a product called Combustion Chamber Cleaner. Mercury Outboards has a product called Power Tune. The thing that I like about these products is they're in an aerosol can that makes them much easier to use. They're the same chemical or active ingredient as GM uses in their GM top engine cleaner, fuel injector cleaner, and Ford uses in their old Star Clean fuel injector cleaner. But the advantage to these is the spray nozzle. If you have a choice and can get either one, the, the chemicals, as far as I know, 
are identical in Yamaha versus Mercury. I like the Mercury slightly better only because the nozzle is more robust. The Yamaha one just barely sticks into the end and sometimes that nozzle comes out when you're trying to spray. Then, if you remember back in high school, everybody had to have the little triple gauges on their car with the ammeter, the voltmeter, and the oil pressure. The oil pressure gauge used a thin walled piece of tubing. And auto parts stores sell this tubing replacement for about four dollars. So go to your Yamaha or Mercury dealer and get, if it's Mercury, a can of power tune. And if it's Yamaha, a can of combustion chamber cleaner. Do not bother to go with brake clean or carburetor cleaner. N neither one is very good. You'll see they go on. Yes, they feel like they're cutting. Yes, they clean your hands nicely when you rub on it and it feels cold and so on and you think it's doing a very good job. This stuff, on the other hand, when you spray it on, is very foamy. So shake this can and you'll see it'll foam up. And when you put your hand in it, it does not feel aggressive like if you've got a cut, this stuff will burn on the cut, which creates the illusion to you that it will be more aggressive as a solvent. But that's not the case. So before we get started on that, I'd like to do a quick demonstration. I'm going to use two different types of lids. This is the blue lid, and I'm going to use the, uh, the brake clean. And I've got two float bowl bolts, equally dirty. So I'm going to put one in this blue. And I'm going to fill it up to where it's up to the top. Like I said earlier, I would recommend getting the power tune only because the nozzle's better. I'm going to use the Yamaha stuff for this demonstration only because this can is almost empty and this can is full. Now you'll see this stuff is going to foam up on me. So I'm going to have to add some to it a couple of times during the video where this just filled up with a liquid. This is all foam and it'll settle down to a liquid and then I'll respray it and bring the liquid level up. But at any rate, back where I was discussing the replacement hose for the triple gauges that every kid has to have in his car for some strange reason, the hose on this, which is about four dollars, will fit over the end of the straw in the mercury can so it'll give you effectively a flexible hose of a couple of feet long or it'll fit over the hose for the Yamaha can and give you a flexible hose of a couple of feet long. What you'll then do, and I'm going to demonstrate this with the Yamaha can, and you might get to see that hose fly out of there on me. Take this flexible hose and slide it inside the float bowl vent. So you see that's a nice tight fit. Now you're going to want to back the camera up, otherwise it will be coated with the Yamaha combustion chamber cleaner. Spray it and you'll be able to hear, just by listening to it, the foam gurgling up through the emulsifier tube. But we're going to spray the float bowl full of this stuff. Okay, now we can hear it gurgling up through the emulsifier tube. If you can't hear it, you can always take the intake hose off, which goes from the back of the air box to the carburetor. Go 
ahead and shine the camera in through the end. You should be able to see it foaming. Well, you can sure hear it. Can you see it at all? Yeah, okay, let me get a flashlight. Okay. So we would spray this in until you see it foaming or clearly hear it foaming out through the emulsifier tube and let it sit for about 30 minutes. And then after it's set for about 30 minutes, attempt to restart the generator. It'll be difficult to start if it starts at all. If it does not start at all, open up the drain screw in the bottom of the float bowl. which is the flathead screw. Crack it loose. And then come around the front. And you should see liquid coming out one of the three hoses, whichever one happens to be attached to the float bowl drain. Okay, that would be this one is attached to the float bowl drain. So you would see a mixture of gasoline and whatever draining out through that. And after it drains out, you would reseat the screw because obviously what came out of there was a very thick liquid as opposed to thin and runny like gasoline or thin like the combustion chamber cleaner. So now we're going to go ahead and spray it again. And again, like I say, you would actually let it sit for about 30 minutes to really let it cook good. Which, while we're going to let this one sit to demonstrate the point, let me... Uh, go into the fuel pumps for a moment. These fuel pumps that come on these generators are often blamed for a lot of problems and I have people calling up and they have replaced a genuine Honda fuel pump with one they picked up at Napa Auto Parts thinking that the one they got at Napa Auto Parts was the same. In fact, typically the 12 year old behind the counter assured them that they were identical. They are not. And let me show you specifically the problem. If you look at it real quickly, you'll see the one that is made, and of course they are both made by Fawcett. The one that Fawcett makes for Honda, if you look to the intake end, you will see a notch. And on the output end, you'll also see a notch. Now on this output end, you got about 13.7 millimeters from this end to the main body. The one from Napa, you have about 10 millimeters from this end to the main body. And on neither end do they have the notch. The one from Napa is 81 millimeters from end to end of the main hex. <laughs> Zero my meter. This one's even shorter. This one is 73 millimeters. The one that is made for Honda is 86 millimeters. Typically, the ones that you get from Napa are 81 millimeters. The pump must be 86 millimeters from end to end. The difference internally 
is that the wrong pump has too much fuel pressure. It's either, in this case, the 6 to 10 pound, or in the 81 millimeter, it would be the 4 to 6 pound. This one is 1 to 1 and a half pounds fuel pressure. It also has a check valve on the inlet side, so if you shut the engine off, the fuel doesn't drain back to the fuel tank. But the output pressure on this pump is only 1 to 1 and a half pounds output pressure. The ones from Napa, the most popular one, is a 6 to 10 pound, the other is a 4 to 6 pound. Either way, it's too much fuel pressure, and it'll override the needle and seat. So do not go purchasing a fuel pump from Napa. They are not the same. The good news is these fuel pumps fail very, very rarely. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with another shot. Then I'm going to put the intake boot back on it. This solvent that I'm using works extremely well. Do not, as I said earlier, allow somebody from an auto parts store to convince you that the stuff that they sell is just as good. Um, I've never seen one yet that is. We'll be able to show you a little bit more detail on that in a minute. Right now what I'm going to do is take a uh, portable fuel tank and we'll see if we can get this generator to start. shots of this. Now if this does fire up and run after only cleaning the solvent for this long a time, number one I'll be real surprised but number two I'm going to shut it off because right now we're just using this as a demonstration for the video and I don't want to run it in a small room for a real short or for a real long period of time. Mind waiting, do you? After all, you're paid by the hour.
said, I'll be really surprised if it starts up that easily after this short period of time. I don't like to crank one of these starter motors for more than about three seconds under any circumstances. Just a second. sludge on both of the spark plugs. Excuse me. Definitely one of the spark plugs. Okay. We've got it on both the spark plugs. If we can get some light on this. You can see completely gapping the plugs. So this is going to be an excellent generator to demonstrate this on. Because if it works on this one, you can see how good this product actually is. so that you will be able to see that it has not been edited for time or anything else. I'm just going to blow some of that crap out of the uh, spark plug gap. The smell that I just smelt is definitely oxidized fuel. And just a little bit of that cleaner. So what I'm going to do is hold the choke open when I attempt to start it this time, just in case it is pouring fuel still out of the emulsifier tube as though the, uh, the needle is still stuck up or something on it. see me do that, but I just pulled the batteries out of the carbon monoxide leak detector. Uh, I'm also not a big fan of doing that either, but we do have a video to finish. Okay, this actually cleaned up 
much quicker than I had expected. The procedure would be, and you can tell by the smell of that stuff, it brings water to your eyes. That's, that's fierce. Uh, the procedure would be to start it up and run it for about 30 seconds and then put your straw in there and spray that cleaner in there until the motor actually stalls. And if you do that while it's running, it's going to get in through the pilot jet, the pilot fuel port, and the pilot bypass ports and clean them up too. I'm not going to demonstrate that inside this room because the smell is already getting to me. That's something you only do outside. But if it had not started this time, then we would have drained the float bowl again and shot some of that cleaner in it again and gotten it to start. If it does not start with this technique, you'll be forced to go ahead and do a proper carburetor rebuild, which the videos on the proper carburetor rebuild are covered earlier in the page. I think it's video 30, 31, and 32. Don't quote me on that. But at any rate, then once you get it started, spray it in through here until you stall the motor. Let it set again for about 30 minutes and fire it up and it will probably be okay. Now let's go back to the, uh, the uh, float bowl screws that I put in, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes ago. If you look at this one, and this is the one that was soaked in the brake cleaner, and the difference between brake cleaner and carburetor cleaner is largely that brake cleaner is not flammable. But this is what you'll get commercially at auto parts stores as brake cleaner and carburetor cleaner and so forth. Now let me show you the fuel injector cleaner, or in this case, Yamaha's combustion chamber cleaner and Mercury's power tune is significantly more successful. These bolts matched when I put them in. Now that video felt like it took about I don't know, 10, 12 minutes to shoot. We'll go back and look at it later. But you can see why I'm such a big fan of the, uh, the Mercury Power Tune and the Yamaha Combustion Chamber Cleaner. Like I said earlier, if you have a choice, I, I'd go with the Quicksilver, the Mercury Power Tune, only because the nozzle is a little bit easier to work with. I'm sorry about that, Vito. That's actually a shout out to Vito Palazol, who used to work for Yamaha Motor Corporation Technical Services. He's an extremely skilled mechanic, even if he's not as good looking as I am. However, there you have it. It's a really good product. Like I said earlier, if this is not successful, you'll be required to go ahead and do a tar carburetor rebuild on it. I'm going to go ahead and reattach the fuel or the uh, flow ball vent hose that we removed earlier. Then I'll start it up and see if it runs with the flow ball vent hose on. And that'll tell me if it's been clogged up due to some creature. If you were listening closely, you heard it surge just a little bit, which is a sign of a lean condition. And if you weren't listening closely, you can play the video back or just drag the cursor bar backwards again, and you'll have heard it surge just slightly. But I'm going to do that outside where I don't have to breathe these fumes. And that should pretty much cover the subject.